All right, repelling basics. You get up to the top of your climb and you may have already pre-rigged whatever repel extension that you're gonna be using. Choose whichever method you like best in the next video that I'm gonna post about repel extensions. I'll go ahead and just clip into the anchor that I've built instead of clove hitching in because I know I'm just gonna have to untie at one point. Now I am ready to go ahead and start rigging the repel. It was my partner who came up last, so my partner's rope is on top of the stack, so I may as well start threading the rope with my partner's end. So I'm attached so we don't have any risk of dropping the rope, so I'll go ahead and stay attached and have my partner untie. My partner's untied, so I'll go ahead and start threading this end of the rope through the last link of my repel link chain here. I'll thread this all the way until I get to the middle of my rope. My rope has a middle marker. It's called a bi-pattern rope, so there's a different pattern on this side than there is on this side, so that's how I know that I've reached the center of my rope. Other ropes might have a big black mark in the center, and if you don't have the center of your rope marked, you will just need to pull the rope with both ends in my hand until I get all the way to the center of the rope. If I don't want it to uh, move, yes, then I can just tie a blocking knot here until I'm ready to repel to make sure that none of that rope is moving while I throw one end of the rope down. Oftentimes, while multi-pitch climbing, the descent requires a double rope repel. To do that, you'll just thread one end of the rope through the last links of your chain or your repel rings, and then you'll take your second line out of your backpack so it might just be a second rope that you've carried up the climb with you, or oftentimes people carry a single rated rope that's thinner. And this particular one is a 70 meter long, seven millimeter diameter cordelette. And it is slightly lighter and uh, more compact than just carrying a full rope around with you. We'll join the ropes together. The most accepted way of tying two ropes together is the flat overhand. Refer back to the video I posted on how to tie the flat overhand because it can be fatal if you tie it incorrectly. So there's my flat overhand. Before I descend, I just need to make sure that I remember which rope I need to pull to get my rope back. So in this situation, I just remember, all right, I'm pulling through. One of the most common climbing related injuries is people repelling off of the end of their ropes. The best practice is to always tie a knot at the end of your rope. The knot I like to use is a barrel knot. Start with a loop and then another loop. I'll take the tail, thread it through both loops and tighten that up so that there's no air in it and make sure you have plenty of tail. There might be a circumstance where tying a knot in the end of the rope is not necessary. And this is meant for you as, as experienced climbers and not necessarily something that you might go teaching beginners. Uh, and a circumstance where you may choose to not have a knot in the end of the rope is where you can visually see over the edge and see that both ends of the rope are on the ground. It is best practice to always have a backup for your rappel. We'll talk more about backups here in the next video. I've gone ahead and tied the auto block first. It is nice to be able to pull it through my friction hitch so that that is actually holding the rope for me and it makes it a lot easier to thread the rope through my rappel device. And you always want to check your friction hitch to make sure it grips before you commit to it. So before you rappel, you always suck up your device as high up as you can get it. And I'm ready to remove my anchor and I'm ready to rappel. The first method that I'm gonna show you for getting the rope down the cliff is sending the middle down first. And so as I'm threading this through my rappel rings or chain links, I'm gonna start coiling this around my neck. And anytime that you're butterfly coiling, 
to reduce the chances of this rope getting tangled up when you throw it, it is ideal when possible to start with longer loops. And as you continue coiling, try to shorten up each consecutive coil. So now that I have several coils of the end of the rope all around my neck, I'm going to start pre feeding some of this rope down the cliff to allow gravity to take it. And I'll now begin coiling butterfly coils in my hand. Again, start with longer coils to shorter coils until you get to the middle of your rope. And so now I can throw the rest of the middle of the rope first, then followed by the end of my rope. Great, so this is the middle and this is my end. And always make sure to yell rope, rope, rope. And then you can do the same thing on the other side, but now since we've already got the middle of the rope, we can just start pre-feeding part of that down the cliff. And then you can start coiling part of the middle on your neck and then the rest of the rope into your hand. And now I've reached my tie-in point. I can go ahead and untie this now. I'll tie my back up knot. Great, there's that. I've removed the middle coils from my neck and I have the end coils here. Rope, rope. So I should now have both ends of the rope down um, and they should be relatively untangled. The torpedo or football method is useful specifically in a situation where you'd like to be really precise with where your rope ends up along the cliff. You're gonna start by finding the middle of your rope. You need to make sure that the tail end of the rope is coming off of the top of the stack to make sure that it will feed out clean uh, once I throw my torpedo, torpedo. And where I am stacking the rope, I need to make sure that I'm not stacking it over any rocks because I don't want the rope to carry down any rocks with it. I've got the end of my rope with my knot. And I'm going to make several small butterfly coils here. Ideally starting long and moving slightly shorter. You want it to be just heavy enough to where you can, it has enough weight to actually move. And then you're gonna take the rope and tie really tight coils around that, those butterfly coils like that. But you're not gonna finish it because you do want this eventually to come undone on its own so that it stays together just long enough for it to carry the rest of my rope down with it. So I'm gonna pinpoint exactly where I need this rope to go and I'm gonna throw it. And notice that the rope is secure in case it accidentally carried too much momentum. I don't want it to, I don't wanna risk it carrying the entire rope down the cliff so it's still secured to something. And then I'm going to toss this down, rope and it should carry the rest of my stack down with it. And then I can do the same thing on the other side by stacking the middle of the rope on the bottom of my pile and then creating the torpedo with the tail. Another method that I might choose specifically on a windy day to make sure that the ropes don't get taken by the wind and get caught up on a different part of the cliff, then I might choose to use the saddlebag method. I can start by feeding some of the rope down the cliff here. And that way, once I make my saddlebags, I won't have to put as much in the coils and, and therefore I'm minimizing the risk of the rope getting tangled up as I'm descending. You'll start making butterfly coils with the end of the rope. Start with long coils and move to shorter coils so that as the rope is feeding out, it has a less likely ch chance of one of these coils getting caught below another one and then causing an unnecessary tangle. So then I'm going to take a sling, earth hitching the sling to one of my gear loops through my coils here and back up to a carabiner. And then I can do the exact same thing on the other side here. I have my blocking knot, so I do feel comfortable untying. So I've got both ends of my rope coiled and saddlebagged on either side of me. And I have made sure that as the rope feeds out, it's feeding out from the front side, 
And as I descend, the ends of the rope should pull from these saddlebags relatively cleanly, as you can see here. Another method is to use one of the lowering methods. So if you are going to lower a partner, then one of the ends of the rope is automatically going to end up right where you want it if your partner knows where they're stopping. And if you want, you can tie both ends of your rope to your partner as you lower them down. You may opt to keep both ends of the rope tied off or clipped off to yourself so that you are, know where your ends are gonna end up and you're sure that they're not gonna get tangled up on the rest of your rope. Another method for getting the rope down is to just stack the rope in your backpack. And so I have both ends here and I'll go ahead and just start stacking it straight into my pack. And I've hung the pack from my anchor so and I can always clip the ropes through another carabiner or quick draw so that it's easier to feed into a stack. Now, as I descend, the ends are on the bottom, so it should feed out clean without getting tangled. 